Hey, Brian, you think uh, we should teach him how to put these things together? Yes, definitely. This well, is the part I've been looking forward to. Well, let's do it. Hey, Alex, go ahead and uh, push that magic button. In the last segment of Project Steampunk, we drilled rat holes into our goggles, soldered together our power, LED rings, and controller, and uploaded a test sketch to make sure that everything was working. This week, we're adding an analog control, finalizing the electronics, and integrating everything into the 3D printed frame. We're going to start by connecting our analog potentiometer to the Arduino. There are three pins on our single turn potentiometer. The outside pins are for voltage and ground. The middle pin returns a variable voltage depending on the position of the wiper, which is connected to the shaft. We're going to use that variable voltage to control what pattern is being displayed on the LEDs. Solder your ground and positive leads to the outside pins. It doesn't matter which one is which. Then solder a single lead to the middle pin. Insulate your solder joints with lengths of heat shrink tubing. Now let's solder those leads to the Arduino. I soldered ground to the remaining G and D through hole, then the positive lead to the 5 volt hole, and the wiper lead to the analog 7. Poke your leads through, then solder to the through hole, not the wire, and clip off any excess wire. If you have it, take a length of one and a quarter inch heat shrink tubing and wrap your Arduino. You could probably get away without doing this, but I like the extra protection that it affords. Including last week's assembly, you should now have a power source, two daisy chained LED rings, an Arduino, and a potentiometer to control it all. Now, let's go ahead and integrate it with our 3D printed frame. Let's start by adding the LED ring retention plates. These 3D printed parts should hold the LED rings in place while also cutting down on the amount of light that is reflected back into your eyes. Position them so that the wiring harness is positioned within the cutout, then push them into place. Once they're in properly, you should be able to twist and turn the goggles without movement of the LED rings. Now, let's go ahead and install the potentiometer. It should fit perfectly into the 6mm hole that I designed for the right frame. Push it in all the way, then use the washer and nut to secure it. We could be boring and just install the knob over the top of the shaft, but instead take one of your brass gears and shave away the center hole until it can fit over the shaft of the potentiometer. Once it just barely fits, force it onto the potentiometer shaft, then push the knob over the top. Start to insert the right cup into the right frame. It should fit snugly, with just a little pushing required to complete the docking. While you're installing the frame, gently pull the wire along the side of the cup and make sure it goes between the cup and the frame. Once you've got the right cup inserted into the frame, use a piece of double-sided foam tape to attach the Arduino to the inside of the right frame. If you have any excess wire, use a tie wrap to bunch and manage, or just twist it to control the wiring. Moving to the left cup, we first need to disassemble the magnifying loop. Simply unscrew the nut closest to the clip until it comes off, along with the clip halves and the clip spring. Now choose a brass gear with a small center hole and push the loop mounting pole through the gear, then through the 2mm hole in the left frame. Take the nut you just removed and screw it back into the mounting pole on the other side of the frame. Keep tensioning until the magnifying loops are held in place firmly. Take the battery harness and pass it through the hole at the bottom of the battery retention plate. Then, again gently holding the wires against the side of the cup, slip the left cup into the left frame. Once the cup is firmly attached to the frame, and if you've loaded the program from last week's episode, you should be able to put a battery into the power compartment, connect it to the power harness, and enjoy some senseless LED action. So that's where we are right now. Okay. This, this is exactly as we saw it at the end of that last video. Right. This is the code, the 100 lines that we did for our Christmas Arduino projects. Uh, so all it does is it rotates through a series of animations, mm -hmm. spends 10 seconds on each one, and then moves on to the next. And right, the next, just and loops the next. over. Yeah. There's, there's actually six different animations that you can choose from. Um, and yeah, there you yeah. go. Uh, we did add this potentiometer, but right now it does nothing. Right, because we haven't modified the code at all. Exactly. We've got the hardware connected, so this is physically connected to the Arduino, but if you remember that original 100 lines Christmas light code, mm -hmm. uh, it was static. You run it and it just keeps going and going and going. What we're going to do is we're going to show you how you change the code so that you can allow for something like this. And actually, we're modifying a few bits and pieces to make it look even cooler. Nice. Yeah.